this video we're going to look at the vector product. Now the vector product is different than the scalar product. If you remember the scalar product, it gave you just a number or a scalar, but the vector product results in another vector as well. So just to go over the uh, scalar product again, scalar product was a, and you say a dot b equals modulus of a modulus b, and that's times cos of theta, where theta is the angle between a and b. The vector product, and the other way of saying it, is a cross product. So you say a cross b is equal to modulus of a, modulus of b sine theta, where theta is the angle between a and b, and m is a unit vector, which is perpendicular to both a and b. So it's a wee bit strange. So as you turn from A, so it's like using a corkscrew, so it's a wee bit uh, strange to think. As you turn from A to B, M, the perpendicular vector, is in the direction. It is per it's perpendicular. You can see it's perpendicular to both A and B, but it goes in the direction as a corkscrew would move. So as you go from A to B, it will go that way. So it's a wee, uh, what's the main difference between the uh, back scalar uh, scalar and product and the vector product is a dot b is equal to b dot a that's for the scalar but for the vector a cross b is going to be equal to uh, minus of b cross a so they're the negative and the reason for it is if you think of this corkscrew, corkscrew thing uh, here uh, if you went from b turn from b round to a the corkscrew would move in the opposite direction, so it would give you B cross A would give you negative M, so that's why A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. Okay, we're going to look, uh, that's basically the same thing, that's what they're saying here. Uh, we're going to look on down at an example here, and also we're going to, before we do that, we're going to look at the IJs and the Ks. So you're, if you think about your IJ and your K vectors, I is a vector which is one unit along the x-axis, J is a vector which is one unit along the y-axis, and K is perpendicular to both of those. So if you did I to J, you move from I to J with the corkscrew, it would move in that direction. So basically, I cross J gives you K. Likewise, if you did J and you moved in the corkscrew direction, so J through to K, you'd move in the direction of I. And also, I'm missing one. Yep, if you did K cross I, it would give you J. Now, that sounds very difficult to remember. So how you can remember that is they're alphabetical, or, or almost. So I, J, and K. So if you go I to J, you get K. I'm just sorry, let me give me a second to write this in. If you go from I cross j you get k if you did j cross k you got i and we're missing one you did k cross i you get j so if you remember it in that order and then if you change the order you're going to get uh, you're going to get the negative version so for example if i did k cross j what i'm going to get is negative i because i've got against the order that I should go likewise if i went j cross i i'm going to get negative k and if I did I cross K, I'll get negative J, and that's it. So that's where those come from as well. So I'll just write those in, what have I just said? Uh, I'll start with the I this time. So if I did uh, I cross K, I would get negative J, sorry. I will get negative J. If I did my J cross I, so again, I'm going the wrong way, so I'm going to get negative k, and if I did k cross uh, j, I would get negative i, and that's it. Okay, uh, vector product can be equal to zero. So the vector product is equal to zero. If you have a cross b equal to zero, then since a cross, what a cross b is, remember it's modulus a modulus b sine theta times n, which is perpendicular. Either uh, your modulus of A equals zero, your modulus B equals zero, or your sine theta equal, equals zero. So that means it's one of these things equals zero, or else sine theta is equal to zero. So theta, sine theta is equal to zero, theta is equal to zero or pi, which or in degrees at zero or 180 degrees. So that means if you get A cross B equals zero, 
then either a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero, or else because of sine theta being zero, that means a and b are parallel. So it's a, a big, big difference from our scalar product. Remember, if you had a, a dot b was equal to zero, then they were perpendicular. But here, a cross b means a and b are parallel, and that's it. Okay, sort of talked through this. This is what we uh, talked through in the previous bit. Uh, but so we've got all of those. Uh, so that was just using the, the order thing here, and that's important to remember. But a couple of other things which are important as well, and this comes from them being parallel. If you did i cross i, you get zero because i and i are parallel. If you get j cross j, uh, you're going to get zero because j and j are parallel. And k cross k, you're going to get zero because they are parallel. Right, we're going to look now at a very awkward way of doing this, and then we're going to show you a very quick, easy way of doing this out as well. So here we're looking at doing the vector product of a1i, a2j, a3k, and b1i, b2j, b3k. Now this is horrible, but we're going to see a very easy, this is just really the proof to show that this works a much easier way. Okay, if you were doing this out, basically you've got three things in the first bracket, and crossing with the three things in the second bracket. You're just going to do that out as you would normally do. So a1i times b1i. It'll give you a1i, b1i, sorry, it's not times, it's cross. So a1i, b1i, and then i cross i. And you've got a1i times your b2j. So that's plus a1, b2, i, i cross j. And then you've got your a1i cross your b3k. So it's a1, b3, i cross k. I am not going to go through all of these. I'm just doing going through the first three. But that's how you would expand. So I've expanded my whole second bracket has been multiplied now by a1i to give me these first three terms. Now we're going to skip, uh, scoot on and look at what they would become. i cross i disappears because i cross i, remember, is zero. You're left then with i cross j. And i cross j we know is equal to k. So that just gives you a1, b2 k, uh, times vector k. So that's where that comes from. And this one. Uh, a1, b2, b3, and it's i cross k, so that's not in the alphabetical order, so that's going to give me minus j, so that's where that comes from. Uh, so you can see what the final line looks like, right? You do not want to have to do all of this out, this would be horrendous. So thankfully, this works out to be the same as the determinant of a 3 by 3, if in the first row you put i, j, k, the second row then you put the coefficients, a1, a2, a3, the third row, you put the other coefficients, b1, b2, b3. And if you work that out, you get uh, what is required. You would get all of this. So it works out to do the same. So this thing is equivalent to this. So we'll show you a numerical example now of us using this. Okay, so this example says, find a unit vector which is perpendicular to both a and b. So if you do a cross b, that gives you a unit, that uh, gives you a vector which is perpendicular to both a and b. Uh, and then we'll just have to sort it out and get it into unit vector form. So just say, first of all, we will say that, oops, sorry, we'll say, first of all, that A cross B is, I'll just say, perpendicular to both A and B. Okay, so how we go about doing this? So your A cross B equals the modulus and you just put i j k in your first row of your three by three and then the coefficients of your a vector are in the second row so it was two minus one three and the coefficients of your b vector are in your third row so minus one three minus one and then from here on in it's just a bit of fun doing this out uh, look go back over your matrices notes if you've forgotten how to do an inter sorry the determinant of a three by three so it's i upon and it's going to be uh, minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1, and then minus 3 times 3, so it's going to be 1 minus 9. And then it's minus j, and then you're left with 2 times minus 1, which is going to be minus 2, then minus of 3 times minus 1, so that's going to be minus 2 uh, plus 3, and then plus k. And it's multiplying 
2 times 3, which is 6, and minus of minus 1 times minus 1, so that's going to be 6 minus 1 just. Okay, so still I've got my A cross B. It's a bit of a mess. It's minus 8i minus j, and then plus 5 Okay, that's what we've got. Okay, so that's a vector which is perpendicular to n b. Have we done the have we completed the question? It says find a unit vector. So it's not a unit vector just yet. So we'll just say uh, modulus of minus eight i minus j plus five k equals the square root minus eight squared is going to be sixty four minus one squared is going to be one five squared is going to be twenty five. Do that out and you are going to get the square root of 90. So we'll just say our answer then. Answer. Unit vector. Uh, perpendicular to. Perpendicular to A and B. Is. Um, I'm just going to write it as 1 over the square root of 90. And when you did your a cross b, you got uh, minus 8i minus j plus 5k. And that's it done. Okay, this example says find the sine of the acute angle between a, which is 2i minus j plus 2k, and b, which is minus 3i plus 4j plus k. Not a clue. I have not a clue how to do this. So if you don't have a clue how to do it, you write down a question, uh, write down uh, the formulas involved and you think what what can we do then? So it's a sign of the acute angle. It doesn't say the cos. If it had said cos, I would have been thinking my scalar, uh, scalar, product, uh, scalar product rule. But um, here it's vector product because the vector product formula is a cross b is equal to modulus a modulus of b uh, times sine theta times your unit vector m. Okay, now this is giving me a bit more of an idea. What do you definitely want to use, use this? I could find this bit uh, using the determinant of the 3 by 3 thing we've done, done in the previous example. I could find this bit. This is just modules of A. I could find this. This is just modules of B. And then we'll have to do something a wee bit different maybe uh, to find this. So what we could do this will be a vector. Uh, what we could do is take the modulus of this thing and we could get, could get rid of the uh, this uh, unit vector because if you take the modulus of it, the unit vector has just size 1. So we'll just say um, here, this is a unit vector. is perpendicular to A and B. So that tells you, therefore, modulus of A cross B, so this is just looking at the size of the thing, is going to be equal to the square root, sorry, the square root of, this is my modulus of A I'm doing here, so it's going to be 4 plus 1 plus 4. This is my modulus of B, so it's going to be 9 plus 4 Oh, 9 plus 16, 9 plus 16 plus 1, and my then sine theta. And because I've done the modulus, I've got rid of this because this is a unit vector. The size of a unit vector is 1, so it can disappear. So that's where we've got that from. So uh, if you're wondering what that wee line is, I'll just add in there. That was my modulus of A cross B. Is equal to that was my modules of a my modules of b times sine theta okay so if we go on and we actually work out uh, so we've got all of that that's going to we can tidy that up uh, that will be uh, root of 9 that will be very nice the next one will be 9 plus 16 is 25 that's uh, going to be root of 26 times sine theta that's what our thing is so we still have to work out or what our modulus of a cross b is. So we'll have to work out what our a cross b is first of all. So uh, we'll just say now your a cross b equals, and remember it's 
the determinant of a 3 by 3, how, that's how you do it. The second row is the coefficients of the a, so 2 minus 1, 2. The third row is the coefficients of the b, which is minus 3, 4, and 1. And if you work it out, that's going to be i upon uh, minus 1, minus 8. I'm speeding through this, but just go back over your notes on the determinants of a 3 by 3 if you need to. And 2 plus 6, and plus k upon, and that's going to be 8 minus 3. Okay, it's a bit of a mess. Let's tidy it up here. That's going to be minus 9i minus 8j plus 5k. Okay, so that's what you've got. Still got to find the determinant of this thing. Uh, so that was, that was our a cross b, so modulus of a cross b equals an 81 plus 64 plus 25 and the square root of all that. So what I've done there, sorry, I have squared my coefficient of my i, squared my coefficient of j, squared my coefficient of the k's and then square root of the whole thing. And if you do that, you will get that worked out to be root of 170. Okay, I'm going to call this thing equation one back up here so it makes it a wee bit easier for me to exp explain. We'll just say uh, equation one becomes, uh, so I now have root of 170. Uh, we had worked out our modules of A to be root nine. We'd done that earlier on. I'm still writing as a root nine for some reason. I obviously should be writing it as three to make life easier. doesn't matter. And then that is going to be times r sine theta. So it's just a wee bit of work rearranging. I'm going to have root of 170 divided by root of 9 times root of 26 is equal to sine theta. Therefore, do that on your calculator and you'll get your sine theta is equal to, and it works out to be root Sorry, so if you put it all into your calculator, it will come out as uh, root of 85 over 3 root 13. Let's just check that and see. So we had root of 170 over uh, 3, oh, 3 times root of 26. Press equals on your calculator. Well, you know, it doesn't come out as that. It just it simplifies down. Is that if you think about it, you've got that's going to be top line is going to be root two upon root eighty five. Bottom line, that's going to be three, and that's going to be uh, two root uh, root two times root thirteen. So the root two and the root two would cancel. We give you that. The calculator actually gives you a decimal, uh, and the answer would be point uh, eight. five two to three decimal places okay you're now ready to do the questions on this exercise uh, would be on exercise 6a